of an automotive diagnostic robot from the future to discover new problems and new vehicles and to go where no other robot has gone before. Robotech was called into a shop that had a complaint of an illuminated check engine light on a 2005 Cadillac Escalade with a 6.0 liter V8. The shop was wrestling with an intake air temperature code, but was hesitant about changing the mass airflow sensor due to the low mileage, at about 18,000 on the vehicle. The intake air temperature sensor wiring at the sensor checked out fine, but the shop was still seeing a negative value on the intake air temperature sensor reading on the scan tool. The intake air temperature sensor on this vehicle, is incorporated within the mass airflow sensor assembly. Installing one of these sensors on the engine without any results could prove to be a costly mistake. I first scanned the vehicle and pulled a code P0113. This indicated that the circuit was high above the threshold allowed for the sensor's range of operation. By also looking at the freeze frame, you can see that the engine was at an operating temperature of 176 degrees. When the intake air temperature sensor failed with a reading of minus 38 degrees, to verify the intake air temperature failure, I selected the intake air temperature parameter in digital format and I could see the minus 38 degrees value on the scan tool. What was also interesting, was that the scanner pointed out that the vehicle was overcharging at 15.3 volts. This can be seen in the left side bar of the screen. At this point, I wanted to concentrate only on the intake air temperature sensor failure, and deal with the charging system problem later. I went back to the intake air temperature sensor connector to take a reading with my component tester, and found the intake air temperature sensor line to be at 5 volts. According to the component tester screen, and taking into account the high temperatures within the engine compartment, the intake air temperature value should have been well below 4.0 volts. The only way the reference voltage could be at 5 volts is if the reference ground was bad, or the sensor was on an open circuit. So my next move was to unplug the sensor to check the integrity of the connector. It is not uncommon for a connector to have a collapsed pin, or even a broken stranded wire so it's only being held together by the insulation. When I pulled the connector, I was surprised to see only four pins showing at the end of the connector. The intake air temperature reference ground had backed out of the connector completely. At this point, I simply pushed the pin back in place and reinstalled the connector. I took another reading with my component tester and I could see the intake air temperature sensor value came back down to the proper level of about 2.5 volts. I erased the codes and started the vehicle up again to view the intake air temperature sensor value, which was now reading about 86 degrees. To my surprise, the charging voltage also came back to a normal reading of about 14.66 volt. The connector pin could have been pulled out, when someone was replacing the air filter and inadvertently tugged on the mass airflow harness connector. But, let's get back to the high charging volts of the alternator, and why it was now ok. I gave this one a lot of research and just applied some logic to the voltage readings I saw on the scan tool. The ECM saw the ambient temperature of minus 38 degrees and decided to up the charging rate of the alternator to keep the electrons, within a very cold battery moving. This was a normal reaction of the ECM to counteract the frigid ambient conditions it believed the vehicle was exposed to. Once I repaired the problem, the ECM saw the correct ambient temperature and lowered the charging voltage back to a normal state. Chrysler also uses the intake air temperature sensor to control charging voltage according to ambient temperature. This is why the company renamed its intake air temperature sensor, a battery temperature sensor and relocated it much closer to the battery. Gathering information and not jumping to conclusions without checking all the possibilities is crucial to a successful diagnosis. 
Testing a connector should not just involve external examination by back probing the wires, but also an integrity check of the mating plug for proper fit, orientation of wiring at the plug, and the wiring strands leading into the connector pins. There are even dual makers who will sell gauge pins to test the fit of a female connector. Don't try to look into the vehicle's mind or ECM. Be the guy on the inside looking out as well. I hope this story relates with a lot of technicians and DIY techs out there in the trenches. This robot will now power down for a recharge. Will I dream? I don't know. See you next time. Thank you.